to be. My favorite warrior moment throughout the championships. Wow. Wow. Well, I think that the last one to me is the one that's the cherry on top. That's the one that I think about probably the most. Uh, and I think that Steph winning the way he did in the oddest way, which we all know as Warrior fans, he didn't need, but we're so happy he did. It validated everything. Like, he didn't need to do that, we felt, as a fan base, but he kind of did. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it felt like that fourth championship, the way it went down to do it with that team in the way that he did right. against the Celtics and their iconic brand, Sands, Kevin Durant, with on none of the injury BS that always gets glopped onto the first championship. I, I think it's it's the final one at the Boston Garden on the floor where everyone's celebrating, and it felt like that was his moment. Unbelievable moment. It, that, to me, it felt like the... It was like his sword in the stone moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like he finally got his just due. His yeah, crown. He needed that one. He needed that one. When beating the Celtics at six on the parquet floor with the leprechaun. That was so fun. How so fun. Favorite finals memory with the go to state Warriors is game one. If you got a finals prediction between the Mavericks and the Celtics, I'm here to hear for it. I don't know where I'm going on this series. I think it's going to be a fascinating, fascinating series. I w I'm not going to lie. As as we get closer and closer to tip off, I do want to see J.C. Tatum get one. I want to see J.C. Tatum get one. Because he gets disrespected. He's got 64 playoff wins. From 48 to 27. You know who else has more playoff wins than him under the age of 27? It's only LeBron, Magic, and who, Bird, maybe? I, I forgot. I saw the graphic up yesterday. But Tatum's on a short list. I want to see him win it. Am I crazy for saying that I'm rooting for the the Celtics? I think uh, you know they're a team that people either love or hate. And I'm not a Celtic fan. I'm not some like, oh yeah, Irish. No, 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 no. I'm not not one of those. But I do want to see that duo win because I do believe that they've they've been knocking on the door, knocking mm -hmm. on the door, knocking on the door. And a part of me wants to see Brown and Tatum get their just due because I yep. think it's unfair the way we've been criticizing them. Yeah, it, it, winning's it is. hard. Winning is hard. And the Warriors had won their fourth championship in eight years and, against the Celtics a couple years ago. Ahead. And then I'll bake in this. Right. The hater in me, which I admit there is a big hater in me, doesn't want to see Kyrie and Luka win so that we could start this greatest backcourt offensively of all time conversation with just one title. You are a hater, huh? Well, <laughs> I did the same thing with Brady for many years where it's like I didn't want to see Brady surpass Joe Montana. And then eventually I just gave in. I, I don't, honestly, I'm being real. I do not want to see Luka and Kyrie. Not that I don't want them to have success. I don't want to hear the rhetoric wrapped around us flying off the handles oh. and saying that they are a greater backcourt than Steph and, and Clay Thompson. Are they more gifted in the half court as individual yeah. offensive talents? Like if we really parse it down, sure, fine. But I, I don't want, I don't want to see them get put into that. I, I just think it's premature. I think that is, conversation's a little ahead of itself. It is premature. But I look at it like this. It's a compliment to what the Warriors did. It's a compliment to what Steph and Clay did for so many years. Four championships in eight years. The Splash Brothers, the most devastating shooting backcourt of all time in NBA history. I think it's a compliment. Because for many, many years now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, when we both have no hair, we're old, we got wrinkles all in our face and forehead, Hell, I got wrinkles in my forehead now. <laughs> Maybe Botox is in my future. Who knows? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everybody's going to compare what they do to what the Warriors did during this dynastic run because they have all the records. That's true. They, the most road wins, right? As a trio with Draymond, Steph, and Clay. You know, finals appearances, championships, threes made, points per game. Like, they're going to be compared to everybody for the foreseeable future. So I look at it as a compliment as a compliment to the Warriors and what they did. Oh, we don't compare, you know, Luka and Kyrie to say Jordan and Ron Harper or Jordan and John Paxson. No, but we did we did do Curry and Clay with Dumars and Thomas. Right, but they're, they've skipped Dumars but that's, and Thomas. But that's the problem. They skipped Dumars and Thomas and went straight to Steph and Clay, which tells me that, boy, <laughs> they're already... Got Steph and Clay up above. But, they, they, they think about that. You can make the argument that Dumars and, and Isaiah Thomas was deadlier than Steph and Clay. Now, I wouldn't take Dumars and Isaiah Thomas over Steph and Clay because I'm biased and I'm a homer. 
But Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars are good. Yeah, but what I'm not willing to concede is that Dumars and Isaiah have gotten pushed down and forgotten. But that will happen one day to Clan Steph, and I'm not ready for it. I think it's too soon. I don't think it will. I don't think it will. Because they have four championships. Isaiah Dumars have two championships, and in NBA circles, the bad boys pitchers were hated. A lot of people hate them. They just hate them, hate them, hate them for the style of play and what they did to the league. A lot of people felt like they set the league back. I don't agree with that, but that is crazy. But it's a cop to me. I look at it as a compliment to Stephen Clay. I mean, when we talk greatest backcourts, it does feel like Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars get forgotten. They do, and I'm just saying that, like as a Warrior fan. I know how this works. Whatever is modern and happening right now always is the greatest. That's just the way our sports society I, works. See, I, and so I feel like each combination that comes along is going to kind of knock and chip away at them, and I'm not ready for that. No, nah, I don't. That's think, just me. No, nah, I yeah, I don't think that's going to happen with Steph. Steph is one of the more lovable NBA superstars we've ever had. A lot of people have him in the top ten list. Forget what Tracy McGrady said the other day, saying I don't see him in the top ten. I think no, he said he's not in the top five or go. I don't know what T Mac said. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that, right now you know, saying a lot Gilbert of wild Arena things. said that Steph Curry never got doubled or quadruple teamed in their screenshots and crack, pictures, saying like, "Come on, man!" I saw what happened in the finals in 2017. Be in that game, what? Be in all those games at Oakland Arena. Oh, oh, contest time. Start to know the show. Be locked in for the next 15 minutes. And at 7.50, we'll ask a question about what happened during this time, during that time. And if you get the question right, you will win this Warriors fanny pack. They qualify for a chance to win a side Steph Curry jersey. The perfect gift for Father's Day. We'll do that in 15 minutes with know the show. But game what? 2017 NBA Finals. Kevin Durant, first time with the Golden State Warriors. First year with the Golden State Warriors. And he's going down the lane with wide open ducks. RJ Gondala's going down the lane with wide open ducks. Why? Because of the gravity and 10 eyes being on Stephen Curry. Once he crossed half court, three Cavaliers are on high alert. Six eyes like, oh, we're Steph. And you got Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson. <laughs> and all eyes are on Stephen Curry. So I don't think the Warriors will get pushed out. I don't think this backcourt is going to get pushed out because of Steph. Because of the respect factor, because of how he changed the way the game has been played, because of his shot making ability, and you got to remember. So you go push that. Steph. No, 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 no. Because people pushed out Isaiah Thomas. You got to remember how much he's hated. He's hated. Michael Jordan would not play on the dream team if Isaiah was on that team. Yeah, I think you're going. You're going individuals, and I agree with you. Steph's not going to get. No, 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 no. It's part of it. It's part of it. So since Isaiah Thomas is so hated, yeah. hated, Joe Dumars gets no love. And so they push him down just because of Isaiah. I don't Clay know. may get I, elevated, being that splash bro, because of the way he defended other point guards. And then you have Steph Curry, who's the more who's the most lovable superstar we may have ever seen. I don't think Steph's place is at, at, at his his spot is like rock I'm not, solid. I'm not talking for about now. Steph's spot. I'm not talking about yeah, Steph's spot. Yeah, I know, spot. but what I'm, I'm saying is tandem. I think the way we view the two of them is going to because that's what they're gonna say. It's gonna go combos. That's the way this conversation is gonna start to shift. And it's also gonna go, wow, now it's Luca's league over the next X amount of years, and he's the point guard that's gonna he jump the line. He's 23, 24 years old. He already has a championship. I, I don't know. I I, I think the the combo of Clay and Steph will take a hit. I do I do think it will because I've seen this with Jerry Rice and Joe Montana. I've seen this with Jerry Rice and Steve well, Young. They've slowly well, I, gone down actually, the list as time gone on. Chris Russo, Chris Russo, Mad Dog, yesterday on first take had Rice and Montana as the second greatest duel in sports history. I know, and and he had he had old old time Babe Ruth and so, and Lou Gehrig, but he's an but, older. But to your point, he's though, older though. Nobody's pushing down Rice and Montana. They're the gold standard I, I, for so I, many years. I see it all the time. But Rice Matt Dog's in his 60s, B, and so like he's going to cape. And like me, I'm going to well, cape up for the older eras. Well, who cares about what the youngsters think? They well, never saw him play. The youngsters and, write and, history. And look, look, but listen, no, 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 no. no. Here, here, see here. Ah, see, 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 Kelsey see, and see. Mahomes are see, still see, going. See, see, you're doing the same. You're blaming the youngsters for doing the same thing that you do sometimes. When we bring up stuff in the 60s and 70s, especially when it comes to basketball, oh, you push them down. They weren't playing against nobody. It's natural. So the next era is going to do that too. Everybody's going to do that. That's, that's, that's which is why I don't do. want to see Luke and Kyrie but, win. But, but, but you're saying that when we don't bring up other backcourts from the 70s or the 60s no. that were great. No. 
Walt Frazier. In in <laughs> in Terrell most Watson. people, what? Because because what? in most people's minds, the NBA, like again, my mind frame is the NBA starts in '79 when Magic and Larry no, come. No, it in. doesn't. And that's, that's not fair. That, but no, that's no, no. I'm just saying the calibration of how people do. No. It. That's why Wilt and Kareem, and you never see them mentioned when we talk about greatest players. It's you know, Magic, Bird, Jordan. That's when the era of conversation, debate, and combos and things. That's where for most people it starts. You never hear those '70s Lakers or the '60s Celtics get referenced really at all like in in mainstream media conversations that's all i'm saying the mad dogs of the world right. are always going to cape up for the og right. eras you're so, talking to the so, guy so that's talking, elevating right, freaking so, frankie albert for all right so, out loud. so so it's mainstream media then and you know what i said to that mainstream media right now is running with the dan hurley story on day one or game one yeah, of the NBA finals. Sucks. so that's why i don't give a damn about what mainstream media thinks but in barbershop talk in barbershop circles at the bar when you talk about combos as a backcourt, yeah, people will say Parker Ginobili because that, that, nobody's bringing up you Parker sleep Ginobili. On them. That's a good uh, point. I, I, like, no, everybody sleeps on them. And, and Spinotti, come up with the list. Tatum had the most playoff wins under the age of twenty-seven. Who's the three above okay, him? Okay, so he has the fourth most playoff wins by an NBA player before the age of twenty-seven. Only three ahead of him are Magic Johnson. So uh, Magic Johnson has seventy. Tony Parker has seventy-five. Kobe Bryant has seventy-six. So three Hall of Famers right above him. Wow. Obviously. That's pretty incredible. 64 for Jason Tatum, by the way, wins. Playoff wins. And the other thing is, if the Celtics win, doesn't that, like, this combination finally breaks through? Do, don't we look back on history and be like, wow, you know, Steph, he won one against a, an eventual championship combination before they were even ready. Doesn't that kind of just, like, bring him up a little even more? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, Steph submitted. No doubt. Steph submitted. The guy went through LeBron James three times. 3-1 three against LeBron in the finals. The Warriors. 3-1 against LeBron in the finals. So I went everyone says to LeBron. No, no, no. From 2014 on, it's been the Steph Curry era. But now we may be shifting to the Luka, Jokic, Tatum era. It's a era. different era. It's a different, it's a but different for, era. But to me, that championship in 2022 submitted that we were living in the Steph Curry era. That's to, that's just me. You can say LeBron gonna... and you can say Kevin Durant. It's the Steph Curry era. Four championships, two MVPs, five straight finals appearances. Five straight. I'm saying. But what if I say to you, and I, I don't even like I think that there's some there's some truth to this. I don't know where I stand. What if I said to you the lasting image though of the Steph LeBron feud is LeBron getting the block on Iguodala? Like that's the the image that a lot of main like they, they show it on these NBA finals when ABC is going to right. start the final. Yeah. It's going to be in the montage. It's, it's, it's a great play. It is. It's a great play. And it sucks that that it's, is it's, one of the seminal moments in that series um, um, between the two of them. Yeah, it was Cleveland's first ever championship. They came back from a three one deficit. I could get into why they came back from a three one deficit. I'll give them credit for it, but we know what's what. The real ones know. The real ones, though, Kiki Vandeweghe did a little solid for LeBron James and Cliff Cavaliers by suspending Draymond Green, but whatever. But Kevin Durant popped two straight threes in LeBron's eye in back-to-back -back NBA Finals. Steph Curry went crazy. He could have been Finals MVP in those last two series. <laughs> so, to me, it's been a Steph Curry era for 10 years. I don't know why nobody ever talks about that. From 2014 on, you got the first unanimous MVP ever. You got a back-to-back -back MVP. You got a you know, he finally won the finals MVP when he should have won it in 2015 over Andre Godala, but I won't argue about that. Whatever. Who cares? They got the championship. I'm just saying. To me, it was this Steph Curry era from 2014 on. But is he going to get dropped down because Luke and Kyrie wins one championship? I mean, if people want to argue about that, fine. It's a dumb argument. Because one championship, four is more than one, right? I'm not mistaken. If yeah, I'm it, just, it just feels like the math when it comes to the KD years gets skewed because again, I go back to mainstream media and just the way who cares? the nation. But the, but that's who cares people about diminish what's, it. Who cares about Stephen A.'s opinion? Who cares about Skip Bayless's no, opinion? No, it's not even who that. Cares when you're in, when you're, but when you're in, let's say you're in the barbershop and you're arguing, people will say, ah, come on, the KD rings don't count. Oh, well, then that's, and when that's I come, not fair, well, but that's what people say. But, but I live for those conversations because I come with the chopper and I set them straight. And I said I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why the barbershop's fun. Because then I could just use my mouthpiece and my skill set and knowing what's what, and being at those games saying, "Okay, that's what you guys want to do. You want to diminish things." But LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, 
basically game planned a move to go down and team up with each other and try to win eight championships. And they won two out of four. All right? They won two out of four. And and if you really want me to get petty about LeBron James and the Miami Heat, and I like those teams. And I, I'm a big Dwayne Wade fan. I mean, he's on my lip. My, I love one of my Dwayne personal, Wade. One of my personal favorites. Yeah, I love Dwayne Wade. If he real. doesn't ruin his knee, I think they all stay Let, together. Let's be real. LeBron's championship against Kevin Durant and OKC. OKC, was, they were babies. They were babies. The Miami Heat. LeBron had already been in two finals before that series. They were babies. And then against San Antonio, Hall oh, Ray Allen. Jesus Shuttles were saved today. Well, saved today. Greg Popovich worth Tim Duncan. Should never substitute out Tim Duncan. They could have been one in three in the finals. Kawhi just makes his free throws. Yeah. yeah. Kawhi makes the free throws. So, you know, I, I we could get petty on that conversation. If we want to go mainstream media and talk about this and that, we can do that. But I don't think Steph and Clay as a tandem, if we're talking about just backcourt mm-hmm. tandems, I don't think they get pushed down. I, I and I think I don't think they get pushed down because they're loved by so. 